All right, the illegal immigration crisis in America is fantastically, fantastically fantastic. That's the, what I'll have to say. I mean, beyond what anyone could possibly have imagined. And joining me to talk about it is John Radcliffe, former director of national intelligence, former Texas congressman, former prosecutor, and um, he's with the America First Policy Institute, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, John, welcome back to the show. I wanted to just kind of sit back and Good talk sealer. about this disaster at the border. Did you know that the open border policy is really all of President Trump's fault? Okay, this is Joe <laughs> Biden. This is a, we have a great quote, recent quote. Uh, take a listen to what Mr. Biden had to say. The mega Republican congressman of my predecessor spent four years gutting the immigration system under my predecessor. They continue to undermine our border security today. Gutting. Gutting. There's a MAGA quote in there someplace, too. Gutting and MAGA. Now, a flashback from John Radcliffe back in 2021, Sunday Morning Futures, with my pal Maria Bartiromo. Uh, we have a great quote from you about the Northern Triangle countries. Take a listen to this one. This was totally unnecessary, and now it's created a national security issue at our southern border that hadn't existed. President Trump's policies ended the migrant crisis two years ago when he required that Mexico stop its traffic at the southern border and had agreements in place with what we call the Northern Triangle countries. And the thing is, John, uh, so you're responding to Biden, and it's a, a great response. But Trump was able to persuade the left left wing president of Mexico, AMLO, Obrador, to put troops up, uh, put troops up in um, the border with Guatemala and the Mexican South. I think six thousand troops, John. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then another fifteen or twenty thousand troops on the American border, which helped our administration implement Remain in Mexico. Remain in Mexico. And if you took that plus the building of the wall, which wasn't completed, but moved along nicely before Biden, and basically a view, an attitude of catch and deport, you know, we, um, we really, I don't know that we solved everything, but we sure slowed it down. Now, Biden's gone into reverse. So I want to ask you, when you look back on this story, you've had a lot of experience in these areas, what's the most damaging thing that Biden has done, in your judgment, to create what might be as many as 8 million uh, illegals, and maybe more when you add the gotaways. Who knows? Pretty simple, Larry. Um, he failed to listen to the intelligence of the U.S. intelligence community that, that I gave him and that presumably his DNI shared with him. So, you know, to put all of that in context, at the end of the administration, part of the transition, I sat down with Avril Haines, the current DNI. We talked about threats to America, and we went through why China is the, you know, geopolitical threat that they are. We talked about the circumstances in Afghanistan, but we went into at length of the situation at the border and to show how disingenuous and dishonest uh, Joe Biden's comments are, as I explained to her and as you just uh, accurately recounted, um, you know, there'd been a lot of rhetoric from Biden about changing these policies, and I emphasized the Remain in Mexico policy, the agreements with the Northern Triangle countries, Guatemala, you know, Honduras, El Salvador, and showed, you know, the impact that it, that had had, not to solve the problem completely, but we had no caravans at the border, we had no imminent national security threat, it had really slowed to a trickle. And she was told, uh, look, our intelligence is very clear on this. You reverse these policies, you're going to create a crisis that is currently does not exist. Um, and, you know, you're going to threaten the sovereignty and integrity of our territorial borders, and we're going to go back, uh, back in time. But, Larry, they were so intent at proving that Trump was cruel and his policies were bad that they ignored the intelligence, just as they did about China, just as they did with Afghanistan and the withdrawal, and it has created an absolute disaster, and, and one that's hard for people. You and I can talk about the numbers. You know how staggering they are, Larry. I mean, they're just, but it's hard for the average American or the average American voter to comprehend when we talk about the increases. But I think what, the, what, I, would, what I would say is hopeful for our country is, 
the, 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 the percentages and the numbers don't mean anything, but Americans increasingly are seeing migrants impacting their own community. In your city of New York, you now have the mayor of New York and New Yorkers protesting, finally saying, this is a real problem because they've gotten a little taste given what we've exported from Texas uh, up to New York. Um, Americans are now experiencing sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, neighbors dying from fentanyl that's coming from Mexican cartels. And, you know, God forbid we won't, ex we won't experience anything from the 3,000% increase, 3,000% increase of terrorist watch list suspects encountered at the border from the Trump administration to the first two years of the Biden administration. But I don't, so, you know, I, I don't understand. Here's what I've never understood. And I'm, I'm not trying to psychoanalyze it, but, you know, Barack Obama, under whom Biden served as Veep, as we all know, Barack Obama deported a lot of people, a lot of illegals. And also, Barack Obama locked up a lot of families that crossed over the border, stuff that Trump was blamed for. Obama was the guy who launched it. So here's Biden with a completely different policy from Obama or Trump, a, a, literally an open border. I mean, literally right now, offering work permits and ID cards and whatever as an invitation for uh, illegals to just come on over. And they've crippled the law enforcement agencies who are now essentially administrators and babysitters, not law enforcement. I mean, they've done everything possible. I don't understand. What is this? What is the working theory? And then I'm going to ask you about the military. But, John, just on this point, as a matter of intelligence, national intelligence, so forth, what theory were they operating on? Well, the difference between the Obama administration and the Biden administration was in between you had Donald Trump, who actually said, look, the preamble to our Constitution says our primary role is to, you know, um, provide for the common defense, and that means protect the sovereignty and integrity of, the ter of our territorial borders, and he built a wall. And the wall, and, and in between that period of time, the progressive Democrat Party became the voice of the party, and the wall became really the impetus for the change in policy, and they really wanted to reverse everything about that. And that's why the Biden administration policies you know, have been so absurd, and they've really they've they've gone to such great lengths to create again an absolutely unnecessary uh, uh, crisis of of you know really uh, indescribable proportion. John, let me ask you one final question uh, from your experience uh, throughout your career, prosecutor, uh, House member, um, DNI. Um, the role of the American military, and secondly the potential for the American military to work again with the Mexican military. I mean, the two have always had good relations. They have combined exercises and so forth. You know, um, presumably enforcing the border instead of opening it, and secondly, uh, going after the cartels. Do you see in a new Republican administration, no matter whom it is, that there will be a return to an American military role and or an expanded military role working with the Mexican military. Is that a good place to start? Uh, it is. I think it's actually, you know, you, you skipped over the first part, which is, you know, the bad news in this situation is the problem that we're talking about, Larry, there, there are no solutions in the next two years or the next yeah. year and a half with the, yeah. with, with the, with the Biden administration. But, but, and I know there's been a lot of talk about, you know, military intervention at the border and into Mexico and whatnot. And I think that's a good thing to have that conversation. I want the realm of possibility of that possibility in the minds of, uh, of, of the Mexican government and the cartel leadership. But what I would say the starting place, actually, Larry, is notwithstanding everything you said about our cooperation, uh, in, including our joint training exercises with the Mexican military, is where all of this started and worked in the Trump administration was with diplomacy mm -hmm. and with uh, Donald Trump. And, and you left out your good work. It wasn't just uh, it, it was also the tariff aspect mm -hmm. and the economic impact on Mexico that they would have that they would have felt had they not cooperated. But those policies really did work, Larry, and, and diplomacy really worked there with Mexico, with the leadership in Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. And I think that the, the good news for the American people about this problem is it can work again. Yeah. Um, and so that's where I would start. Yeah. But 
Uh, having said that, your your point is absolutely right. You know, if 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 the U.S. military right. needs to be involved again, that is the that is the reason we have a federal government is to protect the sovereignty yeah. and integrity of our territorial borders, yeah. which is clearly not happening. All right, John Ratcliffe, thank you. Thanks for your visit, as hey, always, you sir.